Today we're taking a look at the Thipoc Eureka 50mm f2. It's a 50mm M mount lens with a collapsible design and very vintage aesthetic. Thipoc reached out to me and asked if I was interested in trying out this prototype of the lens. So this isn't a final or production copy of the lens. As a matter of fact, before it arrived here, it was in the hands of my good friend Benj Heisch. He also made a video, definitely check him out down below. Great dude, great channel. But I won't be keeping this lens, this prototype is going back to Thipoc after I get done recording this video. I've had a little bit of time to test the lens out and shoot with it, so this is going to be more of a first impressions of the lens and kind of just where I see it in the whole world of M-mount 50mm. Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about them later on, but first, let's take a close look at this lens. As stated, this is a collapsible design, so when it's not in use, it can be very compact, especially if you take the lens hood off. You can see just how compact this lens can be. Easy lens to keep in the camera bag. If you need to bring an extra lens with you, this is gonna take up next to no space in the bag. As I mentioned, this is an F2 lens, so you have an aperture range of F2 to F16, and this is a declicked aperture, which that is the first con for me with this lens. For video use, declicked apertures or a declicked iris, it makes sense. Uh, not having those hard stops on a photography lens, I'm just not a fan of it. It's way too easy to accidentally move your aperture out of place from where you want it. Just from regular use, holding the camera, carrying it around, even as you're focusing, it's really easy to also touch the aperture ring while focusing, and then that's also gonna throw it off. The further you stop the lens down, the less distance or the less degree of rotation it takes to actually change the aperture and entire stop. One slight movement when you're stopping your lens down, your exposure is gonna change. Of course, if you're looking through the lens and you're using an EVF or the LCD on your camera, you're gonna be able to see that change, but if you're just using the rangefinder, as the light meter is changing, that can just be from, you know, where the camera is pointed as you're shooting. I like to have all of my exposure dialed in exactly where I need it. The lens takes an A36 filter, which it ships with an A36 UV filter, as well as this A36 hood. The way these attach to the lens, you basically just slide it over the front of the lens and then you have this little screw here that you can tighten down. On the lens, it says one meter. That's the last distance that you see, but it actually focuses and moves a little bit past that. I reached out to Thipoc and asked them about that and they said that they've recently updated on their spec sheet that this focuses down to 0.9 meters. The lens does have an infinity lock on the focus, so just like a lot of vintage lenses from this similar style and even collapsible lenses, as you get to infinity, it's gonna lock into place and it's not gonna move unless you push in on this little knob and then you can rotate it. I suppose that can make it a little bit smoother to pull the lens out and lock into place when you don't have to worry about the focus ring, you know, moving that when you're trying to move the entire lens. Um, I just don't like this on lenses from a practical standpoint. Uh, as I'm using them, I much prefer a tab on the bottom of the lens. That's super nitpicky and it really comes down to personal preference, but that's another thing that I just don't like about the lens. But the most important thing is the images, the image quality, the character of the lens, the results. That's what's most important. And I will say that this lens definitely exceeded my expectations. With the price point that this lens is at, uh, 579 US dollars for the aluminum version. For brass, you're looking at 859 US dollars. This is the brass version that I have right here. I think the aluminum version is a really, really good value because both lenses are gonna perform the exact same. They're both gonna have the same image quality. It's just made from a different material and has a slightly different finish. So if the weight and feel and finish of the lens isn't of concern to you, save some money and get the aluminum version because for that price, I think this is a really good lens. I planned on testing this lens out with my M6 right here, but it's recently caught some shutter drag issues, so I'm ending up with a big dark edge on all of my frames, especially on the faster shutter speeds. So this is about to be sent out for repair, and I've tested everything here on the M11 
as a result of that. And at the full, you know, 60 megapixel files on the M11, this lens has no problem keeping up with that. And of course, that's for my tastes. If you're a stickler about sharpness and vignetting and things like that, uh, when you're shooting wide open, then maybe this lens isn't for you. I think you might want to stop down to f2.8 or f4 once you get to that point. More than enough sharpness, no real vignetting that you have to be concerned about, but I personally like the way this looks wide open. For instance, this photo of my good friend Scotty Perry, I love this photo. I could see myself shooting a lot of portraits with this lens wide open. It's got a very slightly softer look, but I still feel like I've got the right amount of detail. It just feels clean. And this was low light after the sun had already gone down. This was ISO 400, F2, and 1 80th of a second. Not 180th of a second, 1 over 80. All of the street lights in the background, you can see they're not perfectly circular. You get a little bit of that sort of cat eye effect, but in my opinion, it doesn't bother me at all. And now here's another one where I shot a photo of a goat. We took the kids to the library the other day. They brought in sort of a pop-up petting zoo with a bunch of different farm animals. I brought this with me with this lens just to shoot a couple test photos specifically for sharing here. I wanted to shoot wide open and just see how sharp it could be. I was able to use a much faster shutter speed and way more light to work with and wide open, the detail, the sharpness there. I would put this up against most 50mm in mount lenses I've used from any manufacturer. That to me is more than enough sharpness. Again, your mileage may vary, your preferences may vary. For me, I think this lens is totally sharp enough and image quality isn't really a concern. It's been a nice lens to shoot with. Again, I don't like the declicked aperture and I don't like the focus lock or the focusing knob here. Uh, neither of those things I'm a fan of. However, I love the compact design. Being able to just keep this in the bag no matter what, it doesn't take up any space and it just has a nice look to it. It's different from my Voigtlander that I normally use and I like kind of having the option depending on what kind of look I want to get. I'm excited to see what else comes from Thipoc. They also have the 28mm f1.4 Samara lens. Um, I've seen a lot of videos of that lens. It seems like a lot of people in the whole in-mount world, a lot of people are really liking that lens. Um, Thipoc actually asked if I wanted to check that lens out. I'm just not a 28 millimeter kind of guy and a lot of people have already shared plenty about that lens and used it better than I could. Uh, so that's why I opted to try out this little Eureka lens and I'm glad I did. Thipoc seems to be making a pretty big impact in a good way amongst a lot of the M-mount users out there and uh, I'm excited to see what comes next from them. So big thanks to Thipoc for letting me test this out and also a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All the different templates to choose from to get started, it can be overwhelming to think about building something like this, but it's really easy with Squarespace. They have templates to choose from, you can fine tune and customize it to fit your liking, and from there, whatever you need as a photographer, it's built right in. You can show your work, you can have an online store to sell prints or zines, photo books. My latest book, Surveyor, which is available now, that's also on my website. I'm able to sell all of these orders and fulfill all of the orders, pay for shipping, everything I need to do running an online store. It's built into Squarespace and it's incredibly easy to use. Email newsletters, marketing, analytics, they have everything you could possibly need and it's all incredibly easy to use. If you need help with anything, they have 24-7 award-winning customer service. I've used them myself many times. They're great. Squarespace can be a great tool for any photographer out there, any creative, any entrepreneur, really anybody who wants to have a space online that they can call their own. For me, everything I've done as a photographer, Squarespace has been a key part of that. So make good use of the tools we have available. You can do this for yourself for free at squarespace.com for a free trial. But when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday and use the promo code mattday at checkout. That's going to save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope this was a helpful video if you've been curious about this lens and wanted to know more about it. I hope it answered some questions, but anything you have, any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll keep the conversation going. But that's it for today. So thanks for watching guys. I love you and I'll see you next time.